Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Hi. Okay. Um, everybody, welcome. And uh, first of all, I need to um, apologize because I couldn't really... Uh, hello. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Uh, can everybody hear me, by the way? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Okay, uh, as I was I was saying, um uh first uh, I need to apologize because I couldn't be uh here with you uh in class number two or class number three. Class number two was a real problem because I was totally stuck in traffic. And I really had I couldn't do anything. Okay. I couldn't do anything. Um uh, uh, I actually got home really, really late that night. And then on, um, it was Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, Wednesday. Um, I was, well, I'm still a little bit sick. I think I sound a little bit better than I did back on Monday. Um, but on Wednesday, I definitely was in no condition of teaching a class. My, 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 my eyes were like, I was kind of like crying. My, my nose was extremely runny and, and it was incredibly uncomfortable. That's why I, I had to ask for a substitution, okay? <laughs> so the cool thing is that we're a team, so it's it's pretty nice. All right, we're going to uh, begin. I'm going to, first I'm going to uh, share the screen with you. Just give me a second. Here we go. Okay, there it is. And uh, second, attendance. So when you hear your name, please let me know. Okay. Uh, Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Hello? Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. All right. Um, Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Good evening, teacher. Hello, welcome. How are you? Better, thank you. Okay, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher, present. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Uh, Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher, I am here. Welcome. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Welcome. Uh, Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Sorry. Hello, Daisy. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Present, teacher. Welcome. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. 
Present, teacher. Welcome, welcome. Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Good evening, present, teacher. Hello, welcome. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Good evening, present. Okay, welcome, Melanie. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. I'm here, teacher, present. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Here. Reina Isabel, okay. Hello. Again, I can barely hear you, but I see you're, you're online. Uh, Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Rufino. Hello, Present. Rosa. Hello, Rosa. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present, teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Okay, welcome. All right. Uh, let's begin. Okay, we have a lot to do. This is Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service. Once again, today is, uh, well, today's November the 3rd of 2023, and this is session number four. So let's do it. I understand you have covered uh, a number of exercises with teacher Marcela, so we're going to continue right here. There's a lot we need to do. Take a look, uh, lesson objective in this class, in this class section, in this section, I'm sorry, participants will be able to talk about typical student in the class and practice the grammar lesson as well as to learn and practice using adjectives, verbs, and phrases related to accepting things as they are or making changes. So uh, let's take a look at this. This is uh, section 1.4, typical student profiles. We have a couple chat entries. Boris Salinas is here. Okay, thank you, Boris. And Carla Perla also. Okay, thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Welcome. So uh, typical student profile. This is group work, complete the profile and then compare answers with your group. Okay, so what do you have? Okay, are you typical? I just want you to tick the boxes or tell me if you have done these activities or not. The first one is, I have never shopped online. If this is true for you, then, well, you, you let me know. Okay, number two, I eat breakfast every morning. I have a full or part-time job. Number four, I have visited a foreign country. Number five, I use public transportation. Number six, I keep a daily personal diary. Okay, so let's go with uh, number one. I just need a volunteer. Okay, nothing more than that. I just need a volunteer to tell me if uh, whether this is true for you or not. If it is true, you tell me it is true. If you tell me it is not, if it is not true, you can also tell me it is not true. But of course, I'm looking for people who say it is true. Uh, for example, the first one is, I have never shopped online. In my case, that will be false because I have. I have, actually. But um, is there anyone here for whom this uh, sentence right here, the number one, is true? Maybe someone who has never shopped online? I have ch shopped on, on eBay and Amazon before. I don't do it anymore because it's pretty expensive. I mean... The products are not that expensive, but the shipping is extremely expensive. So, uh, Biden. Yes, I have never shopped online. You have never shopped online. Okay. Why not? Don't don't you like the idea of shopping online? No, I'm not like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, you consume locally. Okay. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> Sorry, still sick. So, okay, we have the first one. Thank you, Byron. What about number two? I eat breakfast every morning. In my case, this is this is true. Totally, I eat breakfast every morning. Every morning of my life, okay? I really can't go uh, for the rest of the day if, if I don't have my breakfast, okay? It's probably my favorite meal of the day. So um, what about number two? Uh, is, is there anyone else here for whom this sentence is true? Jenny Elizabeth, then Sandra Cecilia. For me, it's true, teacher. I eat breakfast every morning. Every single morning. Every, every morning, yes. 365 days a year. Yes. Okay. All right. That sounds great. 
Okay, uh, Sandra Cecilia, you wanted to participate? Yes, I I eat uh, breakfast every morning too. Every morning. What do you usually have for breakfast, Sandra? Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. Okay, all right. I never have cereal and milk. I usually have uh, scrambled eggs and beans and bread. And uh, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> I used to have coffee every morning, but uh, I discovered that I had uh, developed a dependency on coffee. So if I stopped drinking coffee, I got these horrible headaches. Okay. So then I decided not to drink coffee anymore. I mean, I only have coffee on Saturdays. But as I was drinking coffee every single morning, if I, if I stopped for one day, I got these horrible, horrible headaches. And then I just... I decided to just quit it. Okay, um, thanks for your participation. Number three, I have a full or part-time job. In my case, this is true. I have both. <laughs> I have a full-time job and a part-time job. So, <clears throat> so about this, um, um, well, this is, this is uh, in support we're talking about. So I, I guess everybody has a job, I'm guessing. Okay, so, but what about this one? Who wants to uh, participate? Carla Perla. Hi, teacher. For me, uh, it's true. Uh, mm -hmm. I I have a full time job. Okay, uh, great. And from uh, Sunday to Friday. Mm -hmm. From Sunday and to Friday. Yes, on weekend it's free oh. for me. Okay. So you say from Sunday to, so do you mean Monday to Friday? Uh, sorry, yes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Monday to, to Fridays, yes. Okay, all right, so, okay, from Monday to Friday, so weekends off, that's really good. Okay, that's really good. Normally, um, well, uh, m most people have to go to work on Saturdays, usually when they work eight hours a day, but if you work like about nine hours a day, usually your, your weekends are off. Which is which is which is nice. I prefer it that way, actually. Okay, thank you, Carla. What about number four? I have visited a foreign country. In my case, this is false. Okay, I've never visited a foreign country. I've never even been to Guatemala. Okay, so yeah, I've lived nearly forty years in the same country, and I've never visited any other country in my whole life. That's kind of sad. I'm aware of that. Well, what about the rest of you? Is is um. I bet. Okay, there, 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 there has to be someone for whom this sentence is true. I have visited a foreign country. Rufino. I have visited a foreign country. Which country? And, uh, uh, Mexico in, in Cuernavaca City. Wow. Um, uh, um, in Azogue, Azogue City in in Ecuador, e Ecuador. Okay. Cool. How would you say Ecuador? Ecuador. Uh, and... it's Ecuador. That's a country. Ecuador. Ecuador. Mm -hmm. in, in, in Costa Rica and Panama. Wow. Okay. You've been traveling. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> yes. I, I like your background. Think... You look looks like you're in space or something. Yeah. Okay. But but uh, a little time in 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 Panama, in Costa Rica, a little time, but okay. in Mexico for two years. Two years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's that's a long time in Mexico. Okay. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a good adventure. Okay. Thank you, Rufino. What about number five? I use public transportation. In my case, this is currently false. Okay. I used to, you know, uh, ride the bus every day, but not anymore. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. Uh, I just I either go by 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 car, or um, I use the company's transportation. But that's about it. I, I I never use public transportation these days. What about uh, you? Okay, do you use public transportation? Mosquitoes flying around. Okay, um, Imelda, and then Maritza. Imelda? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yes, I, I use public transportation. Uh, actually, I, I like it, but um, 
when I I go groceries, uh, I prefer Uber. But... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, definitely yeah. for for uh, grocery shopping. Yeah, you need a taxi. You need Uber. Okay, yeah. you know, carrying the bags in the bus is not fun. Okay, well, thank you, Imelda, uh, Maritza, and then Luis. In my case, it's true. I use public transportation. Okay, that sounds Frequently. good. Frequently. Okay. <laughs> uh, do, do you go to work by bus? Yes, by bus. Okay. Uh, yes, for for uh, uh, travel for my job. Mm -hmm. uh, to my job from the house. What what time do you take the bus in the morning? Um, um four p.m. Uh, in the morning, four four a.m. You mean? Oh, oh, in the morning. Uh, uh -huh, uh, in, the in the morning. In the morning. In the morning at um sometimes six a.m. Six a.m. Uh, yes. Uh, in the afternoon. Uh, Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Not too early, not too late. That sounds really good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Luis Enriquez. Yes, teacher. I, I like to use uh, public transportation and to make the, to get the bus in special when I got to do something and that I need to, to go to to any place and the end I, I need to use one bus, mm -hmm. not two or three. Mm -hmm. I use only one. Okay. Yeah. The, the, in the uh, of that way I avoid to to drive my car so it's very stress for me. Yeah, I, driving can I be like, stressful. Yes, it's stressful and I like to use the bus in that way. But mm -hmm. in special one, I, I, I need to go to any place and make one bus. That, okay. That's why that is correct for me. So if you can only take, I mean, if, if you need, let's see if I understand. Let me get this straight. If When you have to travel and uh, it's not a very long distance and you can only, and you have to take only one bus, then you take the bus. But if you have to take more than yes. one bus, you prefer to drive. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. In one bus, I I feel good. Okay. So the traffic is very terrible for me to make a drive mm -hmm. my car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have problems. So when I got time in the in in this in this case, the country is very safe mm -hmm. to go in bus. Mm -hmm. That is good for all for all of us. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you, Luis. And what about number six? I keep a daily personal diary. Not me. <laughs> okay, but maybe one of you does. Um, does anyone keep a daily personal diary? Nobody? Okay, let me uh, change the question. Have you ever, in the past, kept a daily personal diary? Maybe when you were teenagers or something. I don't know. Anyone? No one has. Okay, then. Neither have I. All right, so that's it. Are you typical? Okay, so this is the typical student profiles. We're going to continue now. Should I just go with the flow? Go with the flow, okay? Are these adjectives, verbs, and phrases related to accepting things as they are or to making changes? Put them in the columns below. Okay, now this is part of section 1.4, typical student profiles, which uh, you can see in the platform. Uh, you'll see uh, Ms. Jessica explaining it nicely. Um, I want you to just tell me where you will classify these words. You have the adjectives, the verbs, and the phrases. And the two categories are accepting things as they are and making changes. Okay, so uh, let us begin. I just, give me a second here. All right, so uh, the, do, you have, do you have a list of adjectives? There's a list of verbs and uh, the list of phrases okay so uh there's the first one, which is amenable amenable conservative non-conformist rebellious unconventional uh accept that's the verb conform to okay 
confront, rebellious, sorry, rebel against, stand up to, stand up for. And the phrases are be your own person, challenge the, stat the status quo, fit in, follow the crowd, and make waves. Okay. So what is that? What is that? I want you to tell me, right? Accepting things as they are, making changes. Uh, I want you to classify them. I'm going to give you three minutes for you to do this, and then we're going to check answers. All right? Three minutes starting right now. All right, Janira uh, and Alejandro, I believe you have questions. May I talk to you? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, could you, could you uh, repeat the instruction? Okay, no problem. I, 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 uh, I want, I, uh, no problem, no problem. I, I want you to classify the words. You. Uh, you have adjectives, the verbs, and the phrases. I need you to classify them in the two categories that we have here. You have, you have adjectives uh, okay. amenable. Okay, what is that? Accepting things as they are or making changes. The first one, for example, goes in here. What's amenable? It's someone who agrees or is willing to do something. It's a minimal person. For example, you can say, you can tell someone, uh, well, imagine two teenagers are talking and we say, we will go to the party if your parents are amenable. Okay, meaning if your parents agree. If your parents say, yeah, no problem, that's okay. So they're accepting things as they are. That will be the first one. And then yeah, I want you to continue classifying the adjectives, the verbs, and the phrases in the right category. Some of them refer to things, to accepting, sorry, things as they are. And the other category is about making changes. And we only have one minute now.
amenable. Time's up. If you haven't finished, don't worry. We're going to do the exercise right here. So uh, the first one is amenable. Okay, accepting things as they are. Again, an amenable person is a person who agrees or is willing to do the things. <laughs> so when 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 they propose something to this person, this person says like, yeah, no problem. Okay, that person is accepting things as they are. What about the second one, conservative? Which category would that be, Alejandro? Accepting things as they are. Accepting things as they are, of course, right? Thank you. Nonconformist. How about this one? Nonconformist. Who can? Who wants to participate? Please raise your hand. Uh, Miss Romero. Um, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Nonconformist is in making changes making changes yeah a non-conformist person is usually willing to make changes thank you uh janita rebellious what about rebellious obviously making change making changes quite obviously yeah rebellious of course thank you janita rufino unconventional how about this one maybe um, making changes, maybe? making changes. Yeah, absolutely. When something is unconventional, is 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 the opposite of you know traditional. So yeah, it's making changes. Thank you, Rufino. Now, what about the verbs? We have the verb accept. This is pretty obvious, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. I'm going to give it to you. Accept is, of course, accepting things as they are. What about the second one? Conform or conform to? How about this one? Conform. Uh -huh. Sandra Cecilia. Uh, accepting things as they are. Correct. Conform to is like when you say like, okay, <laughs> you simply accept the things as they are. Claudia Yanet. Uh, the next one is confront. Change. Making changes. That is correct. Okay, confront. It's like fight back. Okay, thank you, uh, Claudia. The next one is rebel, rebel against. How about this one? Who can tell me? Rebel against. Uh, Who's speaking? Uh, ah, Rosa. Um, uh -huh. um, in conventional in make um unco unconventional but unconventional is already here uh, uh, right now we're on rebel against where would you classify this one um Maybe um, Alejandro can help us. Uh, your microphone. Uh, rebel again and make it change. Making changes. Okay. All right. So Rosa says rebel against is in making changes. Do you agree, Alejandro? I think he does. Excuse me, did you? I, know, I, I, I was just asking you if you agreed, but yeah, rebel against the ghost in making changes. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Okay. So what about this one? Stand up to or stand up for? How 
How about this one? Stand up two, stand up four. My opinion is my opinion is making changes teacher. that is correct making changes okay normally when you consider that that there is some sort of injustice upon you you stand up for what you believe okay or you stand up to uh the perpetrator the bully etc etc so it's like you want to make a change okay normally for the better okay uh thank you the next one uh marisa be your own person For me, it's making changes. Making changes. That is correct. When you're your own person, that means that you're independent. Okay. Uh, therefore, you're kind of like making changes. Okay. So, um, what about the next one, Rufino? Challenge the status quo. Uh, for me, saying making changes. It's the same, making changes. Okay. It's challenging, you know, things the way they are. So, exactly. It's Pretty much the opposite of accepting things the way they are. Thank you, Rufina. What about fit in? What about fit in? Boris. <clears throat> well, teacher, I uh, classify, classify this in accepting things as they are. That is correct. Okay, fit in. Exactly. You see the situation, you see the people, and you don't try to change. No, the opposite. You try to fit in and keep the the things the way they are. You just fit in. Okay? You make no changes. Thank you. What about the next one? Follow the crowd. Follow the crowd. Profino. The same. Accepting things as they are. That is correct, okay? Accepting things as they are, okay? You just follow the crowd. You don't want to change anything. You just do what the others do, okay? Thank you. And the last one, make waves. What about this one? Where would you classify it? I need one more volunteer. Make waves. Ms. Romero. Um, in making changes? Making changes, yeah. Make waves meaning make a uh, will cause trouble okay that's the meaning of make waves when people cause trouble yeah they're challenging you know uh what is established therefore they are uh making a change in a way so very good we have just classified the vocabulary we have learned some vocabulary let's move on we have this activity right here which is the listening part because of the time because we don't have much time we still need to cover some content we're going to basically skip this part and go directly onto the exercise in the platform which is pretty much the same exercise so what are we going to do here this is a listening part you've probably done it by now do you think uh yoshiko renato and suzanne believe they are more typical or different from most people their age okay so i'm just going to play the track and i want you to tell me if they are different or typical so you have right besides their names, whether they are different or typical, do not use capital letter or period. Okay, so all should be minor case or lower case. I'm going to play the track once and then you uh, tell me the answers. All right, here we go. Do you think Yoshiko, Renato, and Suzanne believe they are more typical or different from most people their age? Uh, could you hear that, by the way? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Okay. Yes, we do. Thank you, thank you. One, Yoshiko. In some ways, small ways, I'm just a typical Japanese teenager. I go to high school five days a week, just like everyone else. I have interests similar to most of my friends. A bunch of us join the sports club at school. Right now, it's our volleyball season. When the weather gets nicer, we will start track. And oh yeah, I love hip hop music. It drives my parents crazy. There's one big way I'm different though. I spent almost six years living outside Japan. My father's company transferred him overseas to Mexico. And of course we went with him. Fitting into a foreign culture was really tough at first, but I guess I'm lucky in the way. I learned to speak Spanish fluently, and I made a lot of good friends there. We still email each other almost every day. 
So you can see that I'm really quite a bit different from my classmates. 2. Renato I don't know. My life is pretty typical, I think. I head off to school at 7 in the morning, and school finishes around the middle of the afternoon. After school, I usually study or play soccer. On weekends, I like to get together with my friends. We usually hang out in one of the shopping centers. Everyone just shows up there on Saturdays and Sundays. It's a lot of fun. Most of the time. I think one way I'm kind of different is that I like to, to do my own thing sometimes. I don't always want to hang out with the group, you know? My friends always want me to hang out with them, but I don't always listen to what they say. I guess you could say that I think for myself. Sometimes it makes my friends upset, but too bad. That's just the way I am. But really, overall, I think I'm pretty typical for my age. 3. Suzanne Hmm, I guess I worry about the same things other kids my age do. You know, grades and getting along with my parents and stuff like that. I guess I'm doing okay in school, but I have to study really hard. I just want to make sure that my grades are good enough so I can get into a decent university. I'm pretty much like everyone else. I go to classes, attend club meetings after school, and then do my homework at night. Weekends are great because I get to sleep late. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm also a member of the orchestra at school. I play the violin. My school is a little different from other schools in the U.S., though. We study all the core subjects like most other students. In the morning, science, math, English, history, the usual stuff. But unlike the other schools, we study things like music, dance, and art in the afternoon. See, I go to a special school for the arts. A lot of us have dreams of becoming dancers or singers someday. That's why we spend so much time learning about the arts. So, yeah, I guess my life is pretty different from most kids my age. All right, so for the first one, Yoshiko, does he consider himself different or typical? It's the exercise in the platform. Okay, Boris. <clears throat> for me, teacher, uh, uh, he is different for most people uh, their age. Okay, that's right. Yoshiko, in this case, is different. Very good. Thank you, uh, Boris. Uh, what about number two, Renato? About this one. Typical. Who said that? Uh, Rosa. Okay, thank you, Rosa. Always let's raise your hand. Okay, yeah, typical. Mm -hmm. That is that is correct. Thank you, Rosa. Very good. And the last one, Suzanne. How about Suzanne? What do you think? Uh, according to what she said, is she a typical person, typical teenager, or uh, a different teenager, relatively? She's typical. Who said that? Uh, me, Carla. Ah, Carla. Okay, thank you, Carla. Okay, well, uh, she's kind of typical in certain ways, but how does she consider herself? And in the audio, she said, or... Yeah, in the track, you could hear that she said that she considers herself, in the end, significantly different from the rest, okay? So we go with different right here. The thing is, with all of them, they are, to a certain degree, typical, and they are all, to a certain certain degree, uh, different. But uh, at the end of each of their participations, they say that they consider themselves, they consider themselves uh, typical, okay? for the most part, or different. In the case of Zuzan, she said she considered herself a little bit different. But yeah, everybody, thank you for your participation. Let's continue. Um, let's move on. Okay. So I want you to take a look at this. We have the starting point right here, and this is the student's concerns. Uh, read Annie's email to a friend. What problems does she have? I'm going to read it here because of the time. She says, hi, Ad hi Adriana. How are things back in Rome? Are you glad to be home again? Sorry I haven't written lately. I've been a bit depressed. My grades aren't as good as they used to be. Classes didn't used to be so difficult. I have to say I miss you. You used to be such a good influence on me. These days, I oversleep. I often miss my classes. That never used to happen because I knew I had to meet you at the cafe in the morning. I remember how you would complain about the coffee here in Canada. 
you used to you used to call it brown water. I'm spending too much money too. Every time I go to the mall, I see something I want to buy. That's another reason I miss you. I will use, I will see some great jacket, but you wouldn't let me buy it. You would always tell me I didn't need it and drag, drag me away. Also, I have a noisy new roommate, Cindy. All she ever does is gab on herself. Remember the way we will sit around talking? You always used to make me laugh. I bet that's a big reason I never used to feel stressed like I do now. Anyways, anyway, sorry, exams will be over on Friday, so I'm sure I'll feel better then. Right soon, Annie. So there's a letter right there, okay? And it includes the piece of grammar we're going to be studying right now. What is that? Take a look at this. This is lesson objective 1.6. In this class, participants will learn and practice using idioms with keep and stay. That's the first part, okay? Expressions with keep and stay. Match the phrases to make questions. Notice the expressions with keep and stay. The first one is, when you move away, do you keep or do you stay connected? Both verbs can be used. You can stay connected or you can keep connected, okay? So uh, that means in contact. What about number two? By the way, this is section 1.7, expressions with keep and stay. So when you're stressed, can you keep what? Oops. There's, sorry, I'm showing the answers. I didn't know that. <laughs> I apologize. Apparently, I'm uh, moving back one slide. Just give me a second. That was bad. Um, just a second. Apparently, I wasn't uh, something that is so called. Fast, teacher. So fast? So, so we couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't, couldn't see, see it. all the... Yeah, sure, <laughs> yes. sure, sure. Yeah, it make me feel better. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm sorry about that. Um, the answers were not supposed to be there, but that's what happens when you have uh, animation zero instead of animation one, two, three, four, five, and six. My mistake. Okay, going back. Okay, we have this. Number two, when you're stressed, can you keep, can you keep what, what is it? Uh, <laughs> being completely honest, okay. Uh, what about this one? Lee. Letter E, who's speaking? Ah, Rosa, right? Yeah. Okay, okay Rosa, Rosa, always remember. Digital hand, okay, the, the virtual hand. Let's, let's read the hand. Okay, yeah, that is correct. When you're stressed, can you keep things in perspective? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like when, when, when they tell you in Spanish, hey, pensar con la cabeza fría, right? Say, keep things in perspective. Because when you are stressed, you don't keep things in perspective, okay? You're, you're, you're not really thinking, you're feeling, and that's the problem, okay? When we're feeling... You make you, you we, we tend to make bad decisions, so yeah, thank you, uh, Rosa Rufino. Number three, after studying all night, how do you stay? Uh, maybe F in class, awake in class, awake in class. Okay, how do you stay awake in class? Yeah, after studying all night, how do you stay awake in class? <laughs> okay, thank you. Number four. Uh, do you ask for help if it's hard to keep, uh, about that one? Who knows? Who knows number four? Nobody? You have this one? Okay, then. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth. Yes, letter B. Letter B. Up with the class. Keep up with the class. Okay. Keep up with the class. That means that as they are covering the contents, you don't understand exactly what's going on, but you need to catch up. Okay. So that means you need to ask for help. Yes. Okay. Keep up with the class. Thank you, uh, Jenny. Byron, number five. Can you read it? Okay. Do you break the rules or do you keep? Letter G, out of trouble. Do you break the rules or do you keep out of trouble? Okay, keep out of trouble means you don't cause 
trouble. Okay, you don't you don't make problems. Okay, normally uh, the authorities are okay with you. All right. So do you break the rules or do you stay out of trouble or keep out of trouble? Okay. Very good. Thank you, Byron. What about number six? Miss Romero, number six, can you read it, please? Yeah. What can children do to keep their body up? They what can students, eight. yeah, what can students do to keep their grades up, to have good grades, okay, to keep good grades? Thank you, Miss Romero. And the last one, Rosa, thank you. Uh, is it important for all friends? to keep a level T? Yeah, to keep in touch or to stay in touch, that means in communication, okay? Thank you very much, that is correct. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, on to the grammar section. Section 1.8, at the end of this section, participants will be able to practice using used to and would. Now, this is not complicated, but there is one thing here that you have to know, the use of would. Past habitual, ha well, past habits, okay, with used to and would. Now, take a look. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Used to and would can both be used to describe past actions or situations which are no longer true. For example, I can say, imagine, this is like present simple, but to talk about the past. I can say, uh, when I was a kid, I, and then I use this one, used to play with Legos, okay? Could be one sentence right there. When I was a kid, I used to play with Legos. Now, when I say, I used to play with Legos, that means I don't do this anymore. I don't play with Legos anymore. I don't play with any toys. I sometimes play video games, okay? But I don't play with Legos. So when I was a kid, I used to play with Legos. That means that that was something that I did when I was a kid. It was a habit that I had, but I don't have it anymore. I don't do this anymore. Sorry. Okay. So that's the meaning of that. Now, you can also use would. And like you can say, when I was a kid, I would play with Legos. And it's the same thing, the same idea. You can say, um, when I was 18, I used to have long hair. It's only an example, I've never had long hair. But that's the thing, you can use used to and you can use would to express or to talk about past habits, okay? Or past situations, okay? Which are no longer true. But you have to be careful with one thing. Take a look. I'm going to read from here. However, would cannot be used with stative verbs such as live, be, have, or like. There are certain verbs that don't express actions. These verbs express states. What about a verb that expresses a state? A verb that expresses a state is always true or is true for a very long period of time. For example, if I ask you a question and I say, hey, where do you live? Imagine somebody tells me I live in Mexicanos. Okay, all right, so you live in Mexicanos. So um, tomorrow when you wake up, you will still live in Mexicanos. And by the end of the year, I guess you will still live in Mexicano. So normally when you live in a place, that's an action that doesn't change in a very long time. It remains true for a significant period of time. So when that happens, okay, you can only use used to, but not would. There are certain verbs, again, that express states, and that is one of them. Another one is the verb have. I have a question. Who has a dog here? Who has a dog? Nobody has a dog? No one does. Okay, then. All right, but imagine you have a dog. Okay, Miss Romero. Okay, Boris, I guess. Okay. Two. Okay. I used to. 
Ah, you used to. Not anymore. Okay. All right. So, well. Uh, but does here i'm sorry there are no mine but they come like a white dog to my wow. house uh-huh okay so they were like <laughs> kind serious. of yours okay all yeah, right uh -huh. i have to feed them <laughs> sometimes <laughs> yeah they were yours okay adopted <laughs> okay so um let's change this sentence okay and we'll say Miss Romero used to have five dogs. Okay, we have this sentence. Miss Romero used to have five dogs. That means she doesn't have the dogs anymore. But in the past, she used to have them. But what happens with the verb have? Have is a state verb. It's not an action verb. It's a state verb, which means you can only use used to, but you can't use would. If you say, in this case, mm, Miss Romero would have five dogs. This will be incorrect. Okay. Why? Because the verb is a state. If the verb expresses a state, your only option is used to. If the verb expresses an action, like the verb play, okay, then you have options. You can use used to or you can use would, whichever is okay to you. All right, so just be careful with that. Another example will be, imagine um, you can say, when I was young, I used to be chubby, okay? I used to be a little chubby. All right, so what happens here? This is the verb be. I have a question for you. Is the verb be, does the verb be express an action? or a state, what do you think? A state. It is a state, okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know who spoke, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, it is a state, that is correct, okay? So that means that you can only use used to, but not would. You cannot say, when I was young, I would be a little chubby. That would be a mistake, okay? So be careful with that. So what are we going to do? Take a look at this. You have four examples. You always used to make me laugh. Okay, used to make me laugh. Solías hacerme reír. Classes didn't used to be so difficult. By the way, the negative form, this is past simple. Okay, so when you use, like in this case, uh, imagine I used to have a dog. This is affirmative form. In past simple, you have to use the verb in past in affirmative sentences. But in negative sentences, no. You use didn't, and after that, you have to use the verb in base form. You say, I didn't use, just like that, no D, to have a cat. Okay? So be careful right there. In the negative sentence, Okay, you have to use the verb use, okay, in base form because this is past simple. Essentially, this is past simple. If it's affirmative, use the D, okay? I used to have a dog. You have to include the D in, this, in the verb. But if, if it is negative, you say, I didn't use, okay? No D at the end, okay? So I didn't use to have a cat. Same thing happens with a question. As, as you know, in past simple, did you use... Just like that, don't add a letter D because that will be incorrect. Did you used to have a pet? That's the idea. And the answer will be, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Because this is as simple, essentially. Okay, just remember, if you have an action verb, you can use used to and you can use would. If you have a state verb, you can only use used to, but not would. Okay, so keep that in mind. Next example, remember the way we will sit around talking? 
I will see some great jacket, but you wouldn't let me buy it. What are we going to do? This is the final exercise right here. This is uh, knowledge check 1.10. Complete these sentences with used to or would. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. Again, if it is an action verb, you can use used to or would. But if it is a state verb, you can only use used to. Remember that. Number one is an example. The first year of high school, I wasn't a very good student. I used to think school was boring. Why used to only? Because think is about an opinion. And opinions, having an opinion is a form of state. It's not an action. It's a state. When you have an opinion, that's your opinion. It doesn't really change that easily. So I used to think school was boring. What about number two? I need a volunteer to help me read this. Uh, Byron and then Rufino. Okay. I remember my classmate used to go to the library and work on projects or study. Okay. That is good. I have a question for you, Byron. Is it possible to use wood as well? Used to. Only used to, but not wood. Yeah. Okay. Well, in this case, both are possible. You can say used to or you can use would because go is an action verb. So yeah, when you have an action verb, you can choose. You can say used to or you can use would. Okay, so correct answer. Okay, but also would is possible. Thank you, Byron. Rufino and then Alejandro. Number three, please. You, um, but I. Uh, it's about but I it. Mm -hmm. used to go to the video arcade state but i used to go to the video arcade instead that mm -hmm. is correct okay uh question for you rufino is it possible to use wood uh, maybe maybe <laughs> probably <laughs> you're not sure about it okay that's that's a safe zone right there okay all right maybe maybe not <laughs> now what do you think is it, is it possible or 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 what, what uh, do you think, Rafina? For no, the possible for me, uh, I don't know. I'm sorry, it's not possible, not I possible. Used to only used to, mm -hmm. okay. Let's yeah, check the answer. Only used to is actually, uh, you can say used to or would again, it's oh. the same verb from the previous uh item. You can yeah. say used to or would mm -hmm. because go is an action verb, so. You can say, but I used to go to the video arcade instead, or I would go to the video arcade instead. Thank you, uh, Rufino. Alejandro Quintanilla, you get the next one. Number four. I used to look at wood and go right after class. And okay. I used to or would. Yeah, both are possible. Because again, we have the verb go, which is an action verb. I used to go or I would go right after class. And Jenny Elizabeth? Okay. After class, um, friend, used used to used to or would. Both are possible. Yeah, used to or would spend about two hours there. Okay, because spend is another action verb. Thank you, yeah. uh, Jenny. What about the next one? I knew I was smart, so I wasn't worried about my grades. Number six, volunteer. Maritza Isabel. Number six. Mm -hmm. My mom used to have a job. My mom used to have a job. Question, Maritza, is it possible to use wood? Only used to. Only used to. That is correct because have is a state verb. Okay, that's correct. My mom used to have a job, so she never knew what time I volunteer, please. Number seven. Ms. Romero and then Boris. I used to. I used to, okay, never knew what time I used to get home. Okay, is it possible to okay. use wood, Ms. Romero? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. You're not sure about this one? Okay, maybe... No, uh, about if we could get, if we could use 
would. Okay. In this case, when they say get okay. home, they mean return home. So what do you think? Okay. And then maybe no. <laughs> maybe not. So only used to. Both. Only used to. All right. Let's see. Both are possible because to get home, to return home, that's an action. Okay. Not a state. So yeah, totally. But thank you. Okay, uh, Imelda, the next one. Okay, no, wait a second. Bye. Boris, I believe, wanted to participate. Uh, Boris, do you still want to participate? Yes. Okay, so Boris and then Imelda. So, Boris, one day I had to go to the principal's office. He said... You used to be a great student. You used to be a great student. Is it possible to use would? No. No, that's right, okay, because the verb be is a state verb. Okay, thank you. Uh, now your grades are terrible. Explain. Okay, that was a real wake-up call, Imelda. Imelda, no, not anymore. <laughs> okay, then number nine, somebody. Jenny Elizabeth. I used to be at the library most nights. I used to be at the library most nights with my yes. classmates. Okay. Is it possible to use will? No. No, only, because the verb is, is a state verb. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now that my kids are in high school, I tell them about all the silly things I... Uh, the last one? Just, just to... Uh, so... Um, Either is possible, right? That I used to or I, that I will do when I was their age. Yeah, because the verb do is an action verb. So you can use either used to or would. Okay, very good. That pretty much ends the, 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 the section. Everybody, that was a knowledge check number 1.10. And that's, that's the end of this section. I'm just going to go over the attendance list one more time. And then if you're here, just uh, let me know. Okay, I have to... Things have changed a little bit. Now I have to call it twice in the same class. So here, very quickly, Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Uh, Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Yes. Hello. Okay. Welcome. Uh, Alejandro Jose, you're here. I can see. Present teacher. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Ana Filomena Mendoza. There you are. I can see you. And Ayanira Mendoza, also I yes. And I, okay, and is teacher. there. Okay, well, uh, well, welcome again, uh, Andrea Michel. Yeah, I can see Andrea Michel. She's Bye, online. Teacher. Hello, <laughs> Byron. Yes, Byron is here. Boris Martin. Yes, Boris is here. Cecilia Elizabeth. Cecilia Elizabeth. Guardado Gutierrez. Cecilia Elizabeth. Guardado. No. Cesar Alexander Ramirez is here. Thank you can see him. Okay, thank you. Claudia Yanet Iraeta. I'm still here. Thank you. Debbie Natalia Segura. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. She's online. I can see that. Gabriela Laure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Laure Sequeira Bernal. Uh, Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. She's online. I'm here, teacher. Okay, welcome. Oh, well, welcome again. Sorry. Force of habit. Uh, Gladys Imelda Sanchez. Yes, Imelda is here. Yes. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Yes. Totally. Jose Raibin Enriquez. Jose Raibin Enriquez. No. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. She's Present, here. teacher. Okay, thank you. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Luis Present. is here. Okay, thank you. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present teacher. Thank you, thank you. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Present. Thank you. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Yes, she's here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores is also here. 
Rufino Amilcar Hernández, yes, is here. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía, she is here. I see her on the list. Okay, everybody, uh, one thing, please, 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 okay, complete the first section in the platform, okay? By today, that section must be complete. Les digo, eh, por ahí me han pasado el dato que algunos no la han estado trabajando. Por favor, si no hemos trabajado la unidad, por favor, traemos la unidad, ¿verdad? Que es para esta semana, ya esta noche tendría que estar completa. Ya se cubrieron los ejercicios y la teoría. Ok, everybody, thank you so much. Ok, and uh, I will see you on Monday. Ok, have a great weekend. Bye. See you Monday. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.